Jones. My task uh, in this hour is to talk about uh, one of the top evan uh, former evangelical critics of the Bible. His name is uh, Bart Ehrman. He started as an evangelical. He's now an agnostic. Uh, and I want to talk about uh, the errors of Bart Ehrman. His most popular book is called Misquoting Jesus. I want to talk about his background, his presuppositions, his his brief against the Bible, a response uh, to it, and then answer a couple uh, objections. This is Bart Ehrman. He uh, attended Moody Bible Institute and Wheaton College, two of the most well-known Christian schools in the country. Uh, he came to doubt the inerrancy of the Bible when he went on to Princeton University and was studying a biblical problem that we'll show you uh, later. He came to doubt the inerrancy of the Bible, ultimately to uh, I doubt the existence of God. He claims to be an agnostic, but he really denies that the God of the Bible uh, exists. Uh, he teaches at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Some of his basic writings are Jesus Interrupted, revealing the hidden contradictions in the Bible, the lost scriptures that did not make it into the New Testament, and his famous book, Misquoting Jesus, Who Changed the Bible and Why?, Forged, written in the name of God, in which he denies a lot of the traditional authors of the Bible, and the problem of evil, God's problem, how the Bible fails to answer our most important question, why we suffer. Uh, he is attacking every area of uh, Christianity, the existence of God, miracles, the authenticity of the Bible, the reliability of the Bible, and he's a very knowledgeable, very articulate, very persuasive uh, person. Uh, on my understanding is he has an evangelical wife that I'm sure is praying for him, so pray for her, too, that she can be a strong influence on him. Uh, Airman's presuppositions. Everybody has a bias. Everybody has a presupposition. I debated Bart Airman. There was a two-on-two -two debate at Southeastern University a couple years ago, and in that debate he claimed that uh, he is, has no presuppositions that he takes a neutral, objective approach to the Bible. And as you'll see, the evidence is to the contrary. Because number one, the claim that there is a presuppositionless approach is itself a presupposition. Uh, he has the presupposition that uh, says there are no presuppositions, which of course uh, is not true. Ehrman's bias, or his presupposition, is revealed in these five areas. Now tell me whether you think this is someone without any bias or presupposition. He's an atheist regarding the God of the Bible. He is sure the God of the Bible doesn't exist. He's an anti-supernaturalist. He doesn't believe in any miracles, and especially those in the Bible. He's skeptical about the Bible manuscripts. The Bible uh, manuscripts that we have don't reliably relate the original. He's a pluralist, and we dealt with that earlier this morning uh, in his interpretation of the Bible. He's a relativist. We also dealt uh, with that. Remember I said the three problems today are pluralism, relativism, and naturalism. A and B are both naturalism. Uh, and he's relativistic in his interpretation of the Bible, claiming there is no one correct interpretation of the Bible. Now, there are five of the most radical presuppositions you can have uh, by a man who thinks that he has no presuppositions. Uh, he's an atheist with regard to the God of the Bible. He's an agnostic with regard to any other kind of God. Uh, here's his own words. I don't know whether there is a greater being in the universe, but I do not believe that the God of the Jews, Christians, Muslims, theistic God, exists. I'm an agnostic. Well, you're an atheist regarding the God of the Bible, and you're an agnostic with regard to any other kind of God. So it's with that bias and that presupposition that he approaches a theistic, supernatural book, and to nobody's surprise, finds that it's not reliable. Karl Marx uh, had a very interesting statement about agnostics. What indeed is agnosticism but shame-faced materialism? gutless materialists, a gutless atheist. The agnostic's conception of nature is materialistic throughout. 
an agnostic doesn't have an agnostic worldview. He has an atheist worldview. Uh, so an agnostic is just a gutless atheist. An agnostic is an atheist who is ashamed to say that he's an atheist. Uh, number three, Ehrman's brief against the Bible. The original New Testament resulted from Jesus misinterpreting the Old Testament. The original New Testament manuscripts do not exist. The copies of the New Testament are not reliable. These changes in the copies undermine the doctrine of inerrancy. There were other interpretations of the Old, uh, of the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, and Jesus' life. Therefore, Christianity is not the correct interpretation of the Old Testament and Jesus' life. Well, that's his whole case, as it were. We're going to break it down, and I want to first give a brief response. Number one, false. Number two, true but irrelevant. Number three, false. Number four, false. Number five, uh, true. And number six, false. Now, can you get a true conclusion from three false premises? No, you can't get a true conclusion from one false uh, premise. So we're going to take each of these now and point by point uh, refute uh, his uh, statement and his argument. Number one, the original New Testament resulted from Jesus' misinterpretation of the Old Testament. False. How do we know? Jesus claimed to speak with divine authority. Does this sound like this is somebody who uh, doesn't know how to interpret uh, the Bible? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. You have heard that it was said to you of old time, but I say unto you over and over in the Sermon on the Mount. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. I just want to know how much authority from heaven and earth was given to Bart Ehrman. John 12, 48. The word that I have spoken to you will judge him, will, him, will judge him on the last day. Jesus' teaching were miraculously confirmed by God. Now here's a man, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, who claimed to have divine authority and who proved it by divine confirmation, by miracles. John 3, 2. We know you're a teacher come from God. Nobody can do the miracles you do except God be with him. Acts 2, 22. Jesus, a man attested uh, as authentic from God by miracles, signs, and wonders. Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs uh, that you do except God is with them. Hence, Jesus did not misinterpret the Old Testament. Point two of Ehrman. Original New Testament manuscripts do not exist. True, but irrelevant for two reasons. First of all, neither do the originals of any other classic from the ancient world exist. We don't have an original Aristotle or Plato or Thucydides or Demosthenes or anyone, so it's irrelevant to say we don't have the original New Testament, so we can't reconstruct the New Testament. Otherwise, we'd have to wipe out every history department, every classic department, every university in the world. And scholars trust the copies they have for these other manuscripts with, as we'll see, much less evidence than we have for the New Testament. We have better copies of the New Testament than any other book from the ancient world, period, exclamation point. The New Testament has more copies, uh, closer to the original, better copied than any other book. So it is irrelevant that there are no original manuscripts. So his second point is true but irrelevant, and the first one is false. Uh, third, the copies of the New Testament are not reliable. False. Here's what Bart Ehrman says. And these copies all differ from one another in many thousands of places. He says 400,000 errors in the Bible. These copies differ from one another in so many places, we don't even know how many differences there are. There are more differences among our manuscripts than there are words in the New Testament. There aren't 400,000 words in the New Testament, and there are 400,000 errors in the manuscripts. Uh, note, by this count, Ehrman's book has more errors than there are words in his own book, because somebody counted 18 errors in his first book, and his first book uh, came out 
uh, with 100,000 copies and 18 uh, or 16 times, uh, rather, 16 errors, 16 times 100,000 is 1.6 million errors uh, in his book. There aren't 1.6 million words uh, in the book. Uh, there is uh, much less than that. So the way he counts errors in the Bible, uh, there are more errors in his book than there are words, and nobody should believe a word in his books. We have more New Testament copies than other books. We have now over 57, going on 5,800 uh, Greek manuscripts from the second century up to the 15th century. Most other books from the ancient world, we have 10 to 20. We have 200 of Demosthenes and 643 uh, of Homer's Iliad. <clears throat> That's the most for any other book. We have 5,700 of the New Testament. Two, we have earlier copies. We have copies that go within 25 years of the original. Uh, say the last book of the New Testament was written before 90 AD. We have a copy from around 115, 117 uh, AD. And within 100 years of the time the New Testament ends, we have whole books like Luke and John and epistles. Most other books, thousand year gap between the time the book was written and the first copies. Third, we have better copies than most other books. Bruce Metzger, uh, who was Bartman's teacher at uh, Princeton, and was a great manuscript expert, did a study uh, comparing the Mahabharata of the Hindus, the Homer's Iliad, and the New Testament. He concluded the Mahabharata was only 90% accurately copied, about 10% errors over the years. Iliad, 95% uh, accurate, about 5% errors. A.T. Robertson, the great Greek scholar, said, we're only really in doubt of about one-tenth of one percent. That would mean that the New Testament has been copied with 99.9% .9 accuracy. That's better than ivory soap. It only has 99 and 44, 100 percent pure. What do we have for other people from the ancient world? Let's take the most famous person uh, outside of uh, Christ from the ancient world, Alexander the Great. No contemporary accounts. We have nine people who wrote 27 contemporary accounts before the end of the first century who were contemporaries of the eyewitnesses. First histories of Alexander the Great were 300 years later. Now, does anyone doubt the existence of Alexander or basically that he conquered the then uh, known world on the basis of a couple biographers who lived 300 years later we have nine people writing 27 books who lived at the same time as Christ, were contemporaries uh, of it, and we're doubting that. Critics accept Alexander the Great on the basis of that evidence, a fortiori, with the greater force, we should accept uh, the New Testament. Here's a quote from A.T. Robertson. A real concern is with a thousandth part of the entire text. Introduction to textual criticism, probably the greatest American Greek scholar. So judged by content, the Bible is copied 99.9% .9 accurately. Judged by doctrine, it's copied 100% accurately. Philip Schaff uh, noted the variant readings, those so-called 400,000 errors, are really only variant readings. If you misspell one word in 3,000 manuscripts, that counts as 3,000 errors, the way they count them. That's why 16 errors in Bart Ehrman times 100,000 means 1.6 million errors, so the same logic. Philip Schaff said, uh, of the variants, only 50 were of significance, and there is no article of faith or precept of duty which is not abundantly sustained by other and undoubted passages or by the whole tenor of Scripture. How much truth do we have from the original? 100%. 100% of the truth. The actual content, 99.9. .9. On top of that, we have 19,000 early translations of the old Syriac, Latin, Coptic, Latin Vulgate, and others. Now, with nearly 6,000, round off to 57, 5,800 to 6,000, plus 19,000, that gives us 25,000 copies of the New Testament in whole or in part. 
nothing.